Welcome to the Creative BC FIBC Tax Credit Webinar. I'm Cal Dute, one of the business analysts in the Tax Credit Department here at Creative BC. Please note this presentation will also be recorded and will be available on our website shortly after the webinar. Creative BC would like to gratefully acknowledge the people of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil waututh First Nations. We are honored to be living and working on their ancestral and unceded home territories with commitment to learning how to be a respectful guest. The outline for today's presentation is to give an overview of the FIBC tax credits, the application process of FIBC, and we'll be adding the and we'll be ending the webinar off with a Q&A discussion hosted by Jill Riley, manager of the F tax credit department at Creative BC. Creative BC has many creative sectors that it supports, but for today's webinar, we'll be focusing on the film and television sector. There are two separate tax credit programs available through Creative BC. First, the Production Services Tax Credit, and the other being Film and Central BC Tax Credits. Today, we'll be covering FIBC only. These are refundable tax credits and are based on BC labor expenditures. Just a note, however, however, for PSTC, the tax credit is based on BC labor expenditures incurred in British Columbia. These tax credits are paid out when a production company files a corporate income tax return. You can only access one tax credit program with respect to a production. And also just want to point out that there's a federal domestic tax credit as well, which is available at a rate of 25% of qualified Canadian labor. The protocol will need to apply with CAVCO separately for that tax credit. FIBC is a labor-based tax credit and is available to domestic productions with qualifying levels of Canadian content. It comprises of two certificate phases, the eligibility phase and the completion certificate phase, and it consists of six tax credits. Just to note, if eligible, the production may claim all six tax credits, which means that the production has to be eligible for the basic tax credit first and then can potentially claim the other five bonuses on top of that. Now, firstly, the basic tax credit is based on 35% of the qualified BC labor expenditures for the taxation year for that production. The regional tax credit is 12.5% of the qualified BC labor expenditures for the taxation year prorated by the number of principal photography days in BC outside of the designated Vancouver area to the total days of principal photography in BC. Coupled with that is a distant location regional tax credit, which is 6% of the qualified BC labor expenditures for the taxation year, prorated by the number of principal photo photography days in BC within a prescribed area to the total days of principal photography in BC. The training tax credit is 30% of the amount paid to a BC-based individual registered in an approved training program. However, this is capped at 3% of the PRODCO's qualified BC labor expenditure. The DAVE tax credit is 16% of the qualified BC labor expenditure directly attributable to digital animation, visual effects, and or post-production activities. And finally, the script writing tax credit is 35% of labor paid to a BC-based writer before the end of the final script stage. Now, to assess FIBC, the following are the requirements in order to be eligible for the FIBC tax credit. Firstly, the prod code must be Canadian controlled and BC based. A share registry is used to perform a look through of shareholders, and we use capital IDs to determine citizenship. The production corporation, certificate of incorporation, and a Schedule B aka the certificate of an officer is also required. Schedule B form can be found on our website. To determine if an organization is BC based, the PRODCO needs to have a permanent establishment in BC during the production and is usually in the form of a lease agreement, bank statement, the utility bill, for example. Additionally, the admin fee check with the address printed on it will also suffice this condition. The production cannot be excluded production. To verify this, we'll look at the synopsis and the criteria is that the production cannot be pornography, talk shows, news, live sporting events, game shows, reality television, and advertising. Thirdly, the producer must be a BC-based individual who is Canadian. Here, the producer will need to fill out a Schedule A form being the declaration of BC residency by a producer and or producer-related personnel. This form can also be found on our website. 
Also to note, other producers such as executive producers who are BC based and Canadian will need to fill out Schedule A's as well. Also, the production must be Canadian content by meeting the minimum key creative points required as relied upon by CAFCO. This will be verified with the CAFCO IDs you will be required to submit as part of the application. Next, BC spend requirements are based on the 75% rules, which I'll go over on a later slide, but some of the required items here are that we need a B, uh, sorry a budget and a schedule of BC non BC costs at eligibility, and we pro and we need a final cost report review or audit, and a revised schedule of BC non BC costs form at completion. Now on to copyright ownership, a BC based Canadian controlled Prodco has to own the copyright in the production. But other approved entities such as Telefilm or CMF can own a percentage of the copyright as long as the BC Proco retains over 50% of the copyright. Here the analysts will be reviewing the chain of title documents. Now with respect to market trigger, there must be a written agreement with a Canadian controlled distributor or a Canadian broadcaster. I will discuss this point further on the next slide in addition to other deadlines that one needs to be mindful of. And finally, financing. Here we're checking to see whether there are any deferrals or assistance. Has these grind the tax credit? They don't put you offside though, they just affect the tax credit calculation. So we'll be looking at financing agreements and the audit. Some of the deadlines you need to watch out for are, one, the production must be completed within 24 months of the end of the taxation year in which principal photography began. There must be a written agreement with a Canadian controlled distributor or a Canadian broadcaster to have the production shown in Canada within 24 months of completion. And lastly, there's a deadline for the prod code to apply and to receive the FIBC completion certificate within 30 months from the end of the corporation's tax year in which principal photography began. Now, with respect to Canadian content requirements, the production must be considered Canadian content and a minimum of 6 out of 10 available points need to be achieved. All individuals in each of the key creative positions must be Canadian to get a point. Furthermore, if you have more than one position for a, trip for a particular point, you do not get additional Canadian creative points. For example, if you have more than one editor, each editor needs to be Canadian to achieve one point. If you have one Canadian editor and let's just say one American editor, you lose that point. Um, some other notes, directors do not include field directors. For documentaries, the narrator, the narrator is usually the first lead. If there's no production designer on the production, an art director can qualify for, for this point. And picture editors also may include supervising editors. For documentaries that cannot obtain the minimum 6 out of 10 points, you can still qualify if all the other key creative positions are filled by Canadians. For series, all individuals for all episodes must be Canadian to get a point. As this is for live action um, productions, animated productions have a different point system. If you have any questions or concerns regarding this, please contact us. As I've alluded to earlier, there are 75% rules for BC requirements, which are the principal photography days of the production must be completed in BC. This is not applicable for documentaries, however. The total production costs must be paid to BC-based individuals or corporations for work done in BC. Note for documentaries, the total production costs must be paid to BC-based individuals or corporations. Work does not have to be done in BC. And the cost of post-production work for the production must be carried out in British Columbia. So you need to uh, achieve a minimum of 75% for each of those. Now, with the first section of the calculation, or the basic tax credit, you start with your global cost of production, which at the eligibility stage is the budget, and at completion stage is your audited production costs and or the final cost report amount. You deduct some ineligible costs such as sales or marketing, 50% of catering, craft, and CAFCO FIBC admin fees. Also, you would need to deduct any deferrals and or assistance received. Once you get that net amount, you would multiply it by 60% to, to, to derive at the labor cap. And you compare this to the net qualified BC labor amount. That amount is derived from the breakdown of cost form. 
and you would need to deduct any rider fees and any labor deferrals. Here's an example of a breakdown of cost form that is provided on our website. You're free to use this template or you can use your own template. So between the two net amounts, you pick the lesser of the two and then you take 35% of that to determine the basic tax credit. You can claim the basic tax credit on eligible BC labor directly attributable to the production incurred, which is from after the final script stage to the end of post-production. Before I go into the Dave tax credit notes, I um, just want to remind everyone that applicants must be eligible for the basic tax credit first in order to receive other tax credits. So the DAVE is a refundable tax credit on digital animation, visual effects, and post-production activities performed at BC. Here the analysts look at explanations of how you derived at your DAVE methodology, and we also look at the labor cost breakdown calculation. Now the regional and distant calculations. The regional is for productions that film a majority of the production outside of the designated Vancouver area. Uh, for example, here is the uh, Surrey Langley border of 196th Street is considered regional border. Also to note for a series, there must be a principal photography in a regional location in British Columbia for at least three episodes to meet the criteria be being considered regional. Likewise, the distant location tax credits is available for productions that film a majority of the production outside of the designated Vancouver area in a distant location in BC. Please note that distant location tax credit must be accessed in tandem with the regional tax credit. You can apply for the distant by itself. Here we will look at daily production reports or call sheets and or production schedules to support our analysis of the regional and distant location tax credits. Again, the regional distant requirements here we presented is for live action productions. There's a different system for accessing uh, tax credits for animated productions. You can get in touch with us for further details regarding that. Here is one of the examples of what the regional map looks like. Uh, we have others that are available on our website. Now on to the training tax credit, which is 30% of payments made to the trainees in the tax year while they are participating in the approved training program. To verify this, we generally need a letter from the training program with the names of all participants and their labor amounts. Please note there's a cap of 3% of the corporation's qualified BC labor expenditure, so you receive the tax credit based on whichever is less. Lastly, the script writing tax credit is based on 35% of BC script writing expenditures that's directly attributed to the development of script material for this production and are incurred after February 20th, 2018 or two years prior to the start of principal photography, whichever is later, and has to be before the stage. Cost of purchasing the script is not eligible for this. And some of the documents that we need to verify here are um, the writer's agreement, proof of payment, and the names of BC writers and the labor amounts. For more detail regarding the script writing tax credit, there's an information bulletin on our website. Now I just want to go over a simple example of a basic regional tax credit calculation. Supposedly this prod co has $100,000 of BC labor expenditures. Let's say they film 25 days of principal photography days in BC, and of that, 20 days are considered regional. Now, to derive at the basic tax credit, you would take the qualified BC labor expenditure of 100,000 and multiply that by the basic tax rate at 35% to get 35K. Now, to calculate the regional incentive, you would take the same BC labor expenditure amount, 100,000, multiply that by the fraction of 20 or 25, and further multiply that by the regional tax credit rate of 12.5%, to get $10,000. Now to add the total, he would add 35 to 10 to get $45,000 total tax credits on basic and regional. Uh, just to note, the basic tax credit is capped at a maximum of 60% of the total cost of production. And 
Also, we have a tax credit calculator on our website that may help in your calculations. Now, you might be asking, how do I start an application? Where, how do I plan this? How do I apply? Firstly, one needs to apply online and use the latest forms and templates provided on our temp website. Secondly, submit all the required documents and pertinent fees to avoid any delays. Applications must be fully complete to be forwarded into our queue so an analyst can pick up the file for review right away. And the uh, eligibility certificate fee is $200 plus GST. And the completion certificate fee is the lower of $200 plus GST or 0.6% of the final production costs. Now, to receive the FIBC tax credits, the production would need to have a locked production budget. Secondly, apply to Creative BC for the FIBC eligibility certificate. Complete your production. Again, apply to Creative BC for the FIBC completion certificate. File your corporate income tax returns with CRA and include all certificates. And ultimately, wait for the tax credits to come in. And the Creative BC application process consists of, one, uh, firstly, we receive the application. We review this application on a broad overview, such as we see just quickly if the fee has been paid, a year end has been established, supporting documents make sense. If it all makes sense to us, the application is put into the queue. If not, we'll follow up with you to obtain these missing items. Um, if it does make sense, the first analyst gets assigned a file and does their initial review. If there's any questions, we'll follow up with the applicant via email or phone. And if it looks good on our end, the file gets sent to the second review analyst. Here, the second review analyst may come with additional inquiries. Then it gets sent back to the first reviewer to contact the applicant for further follow-up. Once that's sorted on our end, the second review analyst will fully execute the report. This will trigger us to create certificates and send them in to the appropriate signatories at Credit BC and at the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture. And then finally, these certificates are emailed to the client. And this concludes the FIBC tax credit presentation. And I'll hand this off to Jill Riley, manager of the Creative BC tax credit department, for a Q&A part of the webinar. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Cal. Um, my name is Jill Riley. Um, and as Cal has mentioned, I'm the manager of the tax credit team at Creative BC. And um, I'm here to answer any questions you might have today about the Film Incentive BC. Um, I see we have a question up, which is great. Let's get right to it. Um, so the question is, for short films, do you still require the market trigger um, slash agreement from a distributor or broadcaster? Um, the answer to that question is yes, we do. Um, that um, requirement applies to all types of productions under FIBC. Um, do note that um, we can uh, accept a Canadian Film Festival as meeting the requirement for FIBC market trigger. Um, in this case, the Film Festival would have to be in Canada and the release would have to be within 24 months of completion. Um, and, and we can accept that as meeting um, the distributor or broadcaster requirement. Note that it's not the same rules for CAVCO for the federal tax credit, they still do require a distribution or broadcaster agreement. So um, just so you're aware of that. Um, next, uh, is it possible to apply for tax credits after the production is done? Yes, yes it is. So as Cal has mentioned, um, FIBC is a two-stage process, it's eligibility and completion. But if you haven't got the materials you require prior to um, the um, film being completed, you can apply for eligibility and completion together as one big application. Um, sometimes we see that for smaller productions where there's no um, distributor or broadcaster in place uh, earlier on. Um, you just need to be aware of the deadlines that Cal has mentioned in the, in the um, presentation. Um, the 30-month deadline to get your completion certificate from the first fiscal year end after the start of principal photography and your 24 month deadline to complete the production after that same start date. So yes, um, it's easier and it's probably better <laughs> if you apply earlier, um, but you definitely can still apply after the production is done if you're within the timeframes. Oh, another question. 
uh, let's see, so for the writer director requirement, is Canadian citizenship mandatory or does permanent residency count as well? Great question. Uh, permanent residency can count um, towards the CanCon points for a writer, director, or any of the other key creative positions. Um, if the per person is a permanent resident of Canada or a Canadian citizen, that, that works. Um, you should note that there is a different requirement um, with respect to Canadian citizenship um, for the ownership of the company. In that case, there are different rules where a permanent resident um, may or may not be considered Canadian for the purposes of corporate ownership. So just be aware of that. There's a lot more details. I'm not going to delve into them right now, but just do be aware that if you've got a permanent resident who is the controlling shareholder of your company, there may be some uh, considerations that you'll need to look into to make sure your production's on site. Um, another question. Um, can the presentation be accessed afterwards? Yes, we're going to have that um, up on Facebook and I believe we'll have a link on our website as well. So yes, you'll be able to access it there too. This is so great. This is all these questions. Um, okay, next question. Is there a minimum budget set amount to apply for the tax credits? The film can be 10,000 to 100,000, for example. There is no minimum. Um, under FIBC, there is no minimum budget requirement. There are minimum BC spend requirements, but no minimum budget requirement. That does apply under our other stream of tax credits, which is the production services tax credit, which does have budget minimums. Um, but for FIBC, you're okay uh, with a small budget production. Next, uh, if I have two international producers working with my company, do I need them to be the main company listed to get tax credits? I have two international producers. Um, okay. E okay, so just peeling back a little bit there. So the production company itself has to be Canadian controlled. So there's that. And then the producer under FIBC has to be a BC-based Canadian. So if you have executive producers who are non-BC on your production, that's okay. Um, but you, as the BC-based Canadian, have to be the person with creative and financial control of the production. Um, and um, the company has to be Canadian controlled. So I hope I, I hope I got the gist of that question. But anyway. Oh, hi, Jill. This is the next question. Hi, Jill. Just to confirm, the Canadian Film Fest trigger, is that for short films only or does that work for features too? That can work for features too. It's not just for short films. That's a great follow-up question. Um, yes, that can work um, as well for features. Um, typically, it's lower budget productions um, that we see there, but um, we're trying to get to the spirit and intent of the legislation, which is to make sure the production's shown in Canada um, to Canadians within 24 months of completing. Um, okay, next question. What happens if key creatives wait to be fully paid their rates until the tax credit cash flow comes in? For instance, let's say the director is paid 50% of their rate in order to allow the budget to cover production and then accept the other 50% when the tax credits come in down the road. Okay, so deferred fees um, aren't, aren't included in the tax credit amount, it, but as, so as long as they're paid out, actually paid out by the production corporation to the BC-based individual within the tax year and, or tax year of the company, then you can you can include it as part of your tax credits. You may need to do an adjustment um, if you've only claimed over one year year end um, part of that person's labor. But if you're paying them out in a second year um, for your production corporation, um, you can claim that labor later. Okay, next. Um, can we set up a meeting with your office to discuss our film? Yes, we're we're um, I'm in the office today, but we're we're typically working remotely, and we're not taking uh, meetings in person. But definitely, uh, feel free to reach out to our team at any time. We're here to help you. That's what we're here for. So um, feel free to call us or email us. There's um, you can still get in touch with us very easily, and we always recommend that you you do so before things start going down the road. That way, you can potentially um, avoid any issues 
later. So it's always best to contact us earlier on in your process. Um, another question, if I have specific questions about applying for tax credits, do I email you, Jill? Um, yeah, you can email me. You can email any of our team members. Um, we're, we're all listed on the website. So um, yeah, feel free to get in touch. We're, um, we're ready and, and eager to take your questions. Um, and, or you can call us too, that's fine as well. Um, any advice on use of tax credit certificate to access a bank loan? Okay, so typically what's happening in the, I guess in the last 10 years or so, um, bank loans will typically be offered on the basis of a uh, kind of a comfort letter from a, a accounting firm who will give an estimate of what the tax credits amounts will be, what they think. And the bank will loan usually a percentage of that amount. It, you know, it can vary depending on the level of risk they feel they're taking in, in the loan. Um, but that's usually how um, the pre-financing of uh, the tax credit amount works. Um, so, I mean, certainly if you've got your eligibility certificate, you can show that to the bank um, to, to, uh, to show them that you've been considered eligible for tax credits at, at that stage. Um, another here, to clarify, to receive the credit on a series, three episodes must be filmed in BC. Okay, that's a great follow-up question. Um, so for the regional tax credit for a live action production, at least three episodes of the production have to um, be considered regional episodes. So they have to have um, uh, principal photography in a regional location. And overall, of those three episodes, at least um, five days must be regional, and over 50% of those th um, three episodes, principal photography days, have to be regional. So yes, the answer to that question, <laughs> short, is, is yes, there must be at least three episodes filmed in BC for the regional tax credit on the series. Okay. Wow, this is so great. I'm so glad you guys are asking all these questions. Hi, Jill. If the producer is also the sole shareholder of the company and takes dividends instead of a salary, how do we include his producer fee in the claim? Um, for example, he she is paid 50 k uh, 60k out of the budget but does not take an actual salary. Hmm. So that question, you have to actually pay the individual in order. There, it has to be a cost incurred by the production company to pay an individual to claim it as a BC labor cost. So um, if they're getting it as dividends, that wouldn't be tax credit claimable. Um, it's, uh, it's strictly based on salary and wages, uh, remuneration paid to the individuals from the company. Another question. What processing times can a filmmaker expect for an eligibility application? Great question. So we totally recommend that you apply as early as you can, as soon as you've got the documentation required and your lock budget and your financing in place. Uh, that way we can turn around the tax credit um, certificate sooner. But um, that being said, our, our tax credit queue is quite long right now. So um, we're working away on that and we apologize for it, um, but it is long. So we're at about five and a half to six months from when we receive an application to when an analyst is able to get to it, assuming the documentation's all in place. Then from that stage, the turnaround is quite quick. I'd say two to four weeks, depending. Um, but that's sort of the turnaround once we have the application in. Um, good. So great. I think that's all the questions we've got. And we're at 1030. Um, any more questions? Oh, oh, we see another question coming in. Okay, <laughs> great. Why would a why would a screenplay purchased from a verified BC writer not be applicable towards this incentive? That is because of the language of the legislation. So it was specifically excluded um, in the script writing tax credit, uh, the purchase of a screenplay. Um, that's what we have to process. So um, I don't know the thinking behind it, but that's that's the language of the legislation and that's how we have to, to process that tax credit. Um, yeah, good question. Um, anyway, well, I, I guess I guess that's it. I'm so glad um, you were able to join us here for our first uh, ever 
tax credit information session. I hope you found it useful. Um, um, feel free again to reach out to us if you have any questions and, uh, and stay safe out there. Bye for now.